Good afternoon and welcome to my channel watercolor painting in the afternoon. I'm Beth and this is this should be meditative Monday. It should be because I was thinking about that and doing uh, some lovely zinnias and just sort of relaxing and painting a simple flower. So um, I tried to paint this you know a little practice run last night and yeah they're not simple and I nearly threw my paintbrush across the room because I was so frustrated. Uh, any flower, I understand that any flower that's layered is going to be a little bit complicated. This one was just too much. Um, I'm going to try it for you today. I don't know how meditative it's going to be because I have a tendency to get very frustrated with these flowers but we'll see. What I ended up with last night was this right here. Now on the back are lots of attempts that didn't work. You can see here lots of attempts that did not work. I thought this one worked the best um, but I, I you know I can't duplicate it. I've tried so I don't know what to do. Uh, I, I wrote at the bottom, torturously tedious zinnias. So I ended up doing this and then using sort of a uh, wash and ink or paint and then ink <laughs> kind of approach. And I'm going to attempt to put this in my little watercolor journal here. This journal has been pretty good. It's from Temu, Timu. T-E-M-U. Uh, it's wood pulp paper, I will admit. It's wood pulp paper, but it's pretty decent wood pulp. And, um, you know, I've, I've already done several videos in this book. There's the, the Royal Turn. Um, I painted some green and yellow orchids, some white hydrangea. Uh, did some practice with roses. Um, tried out a thumbnail sketch of a landscape which I subsequently did not like. This is uh, some some scene in Bermuda somewhere but I uh, I didn't like the way it turned out. I did like the way that this one turned out. This one looks pretty good. Um, the foxglove I believe I did a video on. Uh, some wax flowers. That's kind of just a doodle. Some loose pansies. These very deep colored sunflowers. Um, I like them, but I think I'd, I'd like to redo them and, and somehow get the contrast better in them because the values of these sunflowers are too close to one another. A um, little sandpiper. This is a gouache on watercolor field of, I'm going to assume, poppies. Um, I wasn't sure what they were, but I, you know, uh, painted poppies, I guess. I also did this, y'all, a um, little advertisement here. I did this on a longer sheet of paper. Let me see. I can show it to you, I think. Uh, yeah, a longer sheet of paper like this. And I put it on a mug. It's on my Etsy. If you want to get a mug from me, that would be great. But anyway, um, I'll put the link in the description box. So this, and this I did, uh, yeah, I did this while I was watching <laughs> Lost in Space <laughs> reruns. <laughs> you can tell I wasn't really paying attention. So I was just doodling around and messing around. Um, I think this one I did with you guys. This one, I was trying to do the rule of thirds. So I've got my moon in this upper left hand third and my little cactus down here in the lower right hand third and uh, they're kind of balancing each other off and then these big rocks and the foreground and everything. I kind of liked the way it turned out. This was kind of a failure on my part. I just was doodling around and I just put two flowers in there and I don't even think they resemble anything. Um, I did this on a larger piece. This was the last video that I did with you, um, but I did it on a larger piece of paper. So this is my uh, lighthouse, also done using rule of thirds. 
and then my little doodles. So today I wanted to do for you some zinnias. And I wanted it to be meditative, but frankly, <laughs> it's not very meditative. If you, if you think uh, that you might just throw the book across the room because you're frustrated. So the best way I can do zinnias, and I'm going to show it to you, um, coming right up. Thanks for joining me today. So off we go. I have dampened my paints at least a little bit and I'm going to just take a couple of different colors here and try to make what I think is a the color of some some of these zinnias. They're very bright flowers. They're very brightly colored and um, very pretty. So I'm going to take a nice bright orange. I'll dull it down a little bit with some of this yellow ochre. Just a little, not too much. And I'm wondering if that's not a little bit too uh, wet. Let's see, here's my... Okay. Let's see if we can do this. I'm going to start by just putting the first few petals on the page. Just the first few petals. It always looks good when you start out. <laughs> and then it decides to give you trouble. Uh, Alright, stop right there. That's the first little round of petals. Let's do another orange one here. And uh, I'm not really thinking about rule of thirds here, so this is just going to be a little bouquet of flowers. I don't, I don't suppose I have a specific um, thing in mind, you know, configuration in mind here, but composition does count, and I'm still thinking about composition, but I haven't made a specific plan, which is probably a mistake, but you know, today is about, or supposed to be about meditation, right? All right, so there's three of the, the start of three of the orange ones. Let's do some yellow. Make a little bit of yellow right here. Bright, bright, bright. And I'll come up here with this. Um, Let's see if we can't make a few of these little yellow ones. And the yellow ones can be maybe a little smaller than the orange ones in the end. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. They may be the biggest ones I make. I don't know. I'm really, I don't have a plan. To me, that's a part of what being meditative is about. You don't necessarily have a plan. You just do your thing and you hope it turns out. I'm going to put a little yellow bud up here and maybe another one down here. What other color? Oh, I know. Let's do some purple ones. I've got some leftover purple over here on my palette. And uh, I've got to leave a little bit of room around these because I want them to be I'll make a bigger one where I'm going to make it a lot simpler, a much simpler flower. The thing about zinnias with any marigold type or, you know, mum type, I think is what I'm trying to say, flower, um, they're so multi-layered and it's hard to get those multi-layers because each little petal has its shadow and all those little shadows um, help each petal to stand out and to be represented in a certain way. It's just really, really, it's hard. Um, I used to think that peonies were, were really just the hardest flower to do. I no longer think that. I think now it's these layered flowers, these flowers that we think of as being very simple. But they're not. They're not. Let's just make a bud right there. All right. 
I'm going to let that dry for a minute and come back and do another layer and we'll see how this works out. All right, so here we go, layer number two on these orange ones. And I have a much darker paint. You can see right there, I have a much um, darker value going on. And I'm just gonna come out here with this. I don't know what I'm doing. Can you tell? I don't know what I'm doing. All right, um, let's come out here. And we'll just paint some, paint a layer in out here. <laughs> this is why I got the ink later on and made, <laughs> and made it uh, look so much different because honestly, it was just, this is really a difficult thing to do if you're trying to, um, you know, if you're trying to create layers, I've watched other YouTubers, I've watched, you know, people who really do beautiful, gorgeous flowers do these flowers, and they have a hard time with them too. So maybe I don't feel too badly about it myself, but uh, you see what I just did there? I mean, I'm just messing around here. I don't really know what I'm doing. I have no idea, really. Um come down here and we'll put some more yellow in maybe add a little orange to the yellow deepen that some too and we'll just come around here like that you know you almost wish you could just leave them these very simple flowers but they're not they're not simple they're they're multi-layered and complex and beautiful, but difficult to do. So, I try lots of different methods, lots of different ideas. Um, and I, you know, I watched, I tell you, the one person I watched, Ellen Crimmy Trent do this last night. I watched her. And she very much simplified these flowers down to not so many layers. Like a lot of them were single layer flowers and that was it. So there's a precedent for doing that. I really think watercolor can be used in one of two ways. It can be used to paint extremely detailed things, or it can be used to paint very loose uh, florals and you know landscapes or whatever your subject matter is. It can be used to paint things that are very loose. And I, even though I'll tell you now, sometimes it's harder to paint loose than it is to paint detailed when it comes to something like these flowers, I'm just tempted to to barely paint what's there and just hope that your eye understands what I'm trying to do. Because I do think it's, it's just extremely difficult sometimes to paint, to paint loose and to paint detailed. Um, like I said before, each of these petals has its own little shadow, and if you don't put that in there, it just looks like a muddy mess, just like these do. I think that looks like a muddy mess. I'm sorry. I just do. So I'm going to come back with my pen, and I'm going to correct some of that. I'm also going to come in here with the purple and maybe put another little bit. I saw Ellen do this last night, too, so I'm going to give her credit for this. Um, put just a little bit of a hint of a darker um, a darker set of petals right here coming in between maybe a little bit that's it okay so yeah that's about it I'm not I'm not gonna get much more complicated than that 
I just wanted to um, indicate that there was another row of petals in those purple ones. All right, so now we can go on to the stems, and I think I'm going to get a much slimmer brush for that. Let's pick out maybe this little number two Princeton Neptune series. Pick up some green and uh, maybe mix it in with just a little brown there to make it a little bit darker and more believable. Um, now we'll start off with these little buds. Pull them down like that. Maybe this flower comes down this way and this one and then this one. So we're just, just be sure you give each little flower its own stem. Don't leave any of these little buddies out. So right here, and right here. Now let's pull that on down. Okay, there are the stems. We can also make our leaves if we want to. A little bit of Green Appetite Genuine and a little bit of Sap Green together. And we'll start making the leaves. You can see the leaves have kind of this heart shape, but the most important thing is that they are, they do come to a point. And so I think I'm going to try just, you know, just making, making my leaves come to a point and not worry too much about that heart shape there. Um, kind of goes behind and put the point down there. How about that? Okay. Just do a few of these leaves. Just a few. See what I'm doing is just taking the brush and pulling it off to the side a little bit. That's the stem where the leaf comes off. And then I'm going, let's see if you can see that better. Then I'm going to just flick it down um, and make that, make that leaf. Flick it down. Lift and then flick it down. That one kind of goes behind that purple flower there. That to me is the easiest way to make a leaf. If you can have the confidence just to go ahead and go for it, you know. And sometimes you can even make that little heart shape, see? You can even do that. Um, but I, I think that to me it's more important to make sure that they're pointed because they are very pointy little leaves. All right, so. Um, Let's stop there. I'm going to go ahead now and paint the inside of these flowers. Often you get a very dark brown um, as the inside part of the flower, and I'm just dotting that in. Just dotting it in so that we know right where the center is. All of these are kind of looking at you, aren't they? I didn't really put any on their side um, looking up, but that's okay. Again, this is just supposed to be meditative. Like, leave it to me to pick a flower <laughs> that's hard to do for a meditative Monday. All right, now I think that looks actually, you know, pretty decent. I think you can kind of tell that they're a mum style flower. Um, <sighs> zinnias, man. Uh, so let's just let that dry. And I see a place where I did not put a stem. This little flower buddy right here does not have a stem. Let's give him a leaf or two. Let's see, he 
he's going to come down here. So there we go. Now he's got a couple of leaves on him. Okay. All right. We're going to let that dry and you know, all the insides, the innards, and then I'm going to come back with ink because I think that is the best way to make an attractive looking, recognizable zinnia. So I'll be back when it dries. All right, so now I'm going to begin using my ink pen here and we'll see what we can do about adding some ink work, just like I did here, uh, to my flowers. We'll see what happens. This one is still a little bit wet, so I'll avoid that for the moment. But let's see what we can do. This, uh, this ink pen has an interesting little um, bend on the tip of it so that you can do kind of a fat line or a skinny line and I like that about it. So I'm just going to pull some of these up here and then we've got, you see what I'm doing? I'm not even following the paint brush uh, marks all that much. When I get to the outer edge I'll follow them better but not necessarily. I'm, I've got a few that don't even have paint in them right so it's okay you know that's all right now come down here where it's kind of like i said before this muddy mess just this solid orangey looking flower the pen work really helps i'm going to try to make this look like it's facing up that way just a little bit more so these will be kind of shallow on the bottom there and then they'll get bigger as we go up on the flower and that makes it look like it's leaning back a little bit and showing you all of its happy little layers. I really do feel like this is the best way for me anyway to paint a zinnia because goodness gracious they are truly uh, difficult flowers to do if you're trying to just you know, make something that looks relatively detailed. <laughs> Good luck, because I, I certainly am. Uh, it's out of my league. And you see how it can look pretty whimsical that way, and it's easier to do, and it's kind of fun. Here we go in the back there. And then get some coming around this way. Like I said, don't try to make, don't try to put an ink mark around each little petal because that's not going to look as whimsical and interesting, I think. So here we go around this one. There we go. Some of them are just little half circles there um, because you don't see the rest of the petal. All right, so just like that. And then I'm going to come around here with just some inside petals and then the outside petals. And they can be a little wiggly if you want to make them, if you want to make your petals a little wiggly, they can be. Um, or you can just go with the half circle, which is what I've pretty much done here. This other yellow one, an inner circle and an outer circle. Okay. And another little bud up here. And then this last one. Coming in with the inner part of the flower, the outer part of the flower. And I'm just kind of finishing it off quickly there. Don't want it to be too precise. All right, and then I'm just going to bring a line down for each of the stems, you know, so that it just 
Doesn't look like I forgot the stems. <laughs> And be careful, if you want to put a leaf behind the stem, then draw the stem over it. If you don't, if you want that leaf to be over the stem, then skip the leaf. Just like that. And we'll also draw around the leaves. And again, don't have to keep in the lines if you don't want to. Here's where you can add that little heart shape if you'd like, or not. My cat is scratching at the door. I have a 20 pound cat and I gotta tell you right now, I don't know how this cat got to be 20 pounds because I am not feeding him all that much. And I gotta take him to the vet and I'm gonna get fussed at. <laughs> They're gonna fuss at me. So uh, I'm a little bit nervous about that. I don't know what to do about him. I, I haven't been feeding him too much. I really haven't. All right. That's it. That's pretty much my Xenia. That's my solution to a difficult flower. I think they're cute. I'm not sure I would put them in a truly serious um, floral painting where I wanted everything to be just so, but for a loose watercolor on Meditative Monday, I think that they work out just fine. I hope you've enjoyed this, and if you have, I hope that you will like and subscribe. Uh, visit my Etsy shop. There's only one mug <laughs> in the entire shop right now. That's the only, that's the only thing that I have. So uh, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.